Hello and thank you so much for joining us for another SCBA Reflection. Um, hope you're doing well. Uh, looking forward to coming out of lockdown and uh, to meet up uh, with more family and friends. And uh, certainly I, on behalf of the team, just say we can't wait uh, to meet up with you uh, in person soon. Uh, today I want to talk about an app that I was um, introduced to about uh, four months ago now. And it's called What Three Words. Uh, it's a fascinating app and, and a helpful one as well. I like cycling, as you know. And, uh, and what this app does, it, it locates um, your position to within a grid of three square meters. Uh, and the way they do that is by uh, allocating just random words for every three square meters. Uh, and some of those words are actually quite, quite amusing. Uh, let me give you a couple of examples. Um, so for one address, uh, the three words are atomic dining today. <laughs> they must have known I was cooking. But my favourite one is of a hospital in New York and the three words, the three random words uh, used to describe that location are maybe another day. I, it just made me smile. Interestingly, the three words uh, that are at the address of the church that Sue and I attend are, are these, birthing, unloading, implore. And I'm sure there's got to be a good sermon in there somewhere. As I mentioned, going out on the bike, um, knowing uh, that you can, your position can be located, especially in the rural area that we are, is just so helpful. If my bike breaks down or if I run out of puff, I can actually say to Sue very easily, these are the three words to locate me. And using the app, Sue then can come out and, uh, and help. And it got me thinking. Uh, it got me thinking about, I wonder what three words we would describe where we're at right now. The three words that we would use to describe where we've been at over this past difficult uh, year. I'd love you to think about that. I've, I've been thinking about it for some little while. And of course, the answer is it depends when you ask. <laughs> it might, might depend on what kind of meeting that we've just had or the, or the people that we've uh, been sharing with on the phone or uh, on Zoom. But the three words uh, that I want us to hone into are the three words that are used time and again in Scripture. They're words of comfort. Uh, they're words of hope. They're words of healing from our faithful God. And those three words... Uh, do not fear. Do not fear. When you search on Google and you look at some of the words that uh, people have been uh, searching again and again and again over the last year, uh, one of the words uh, would be anxiety. Uh, they've, they've been anxious times. They've been, they've been difficult times for, for all of us. And yet the three words that I think that God wants to speak loudly into our lives again today are these three words, do not fear. We fear all sorts of things. I, I, I've, I've discovered recently um, that I fear going to hospital for a checkup. And uh, my wife has um, uh, coined a phrase um, uh, regarding that. I think it's a scientific term. She calls it scaredy cat. <laughs> which really made me smile uh, because uh, whenever I'm getting an injection or whatever, it just has an effect uh, on me. So I must have got a fear of injections or hospitals or something. Uh, my wife has a real fear of spiders. Uh, our daughter has um, a fear of, of birds. But one of the big fears I have are heights. Uh, and, uh, and I don't know, for whatever reason, that when we go on holiday, my wife just loves taking me to the tallest building in that city or the largest cliff on that coastal line. I'm not sure what's going on there. I, I need to have a word with my wife on that. I remember some years ago, uh, we were in New York, uh, a remarkable city, uh, obviously a, a city that never sleeps. And, uh, and, and late one evening, we went up the Empire State Building. Um, I questioned the logic in that as somebody who doesn't like heights, but my wife assured me that it would be perfectly fine. Well, anyway, we went up there and um, 
Uh, I, I managed to stay within the building at the top uh, while everybody else went out and uh, had a look at the view and then slowly but surely I edged my way out towards the boundary line so I could get the view of the Chrysler building that I really wanted to take on my camera. Now the crazy thing is, is that even if you wanted to fall off the top of the Empire State Building, you couldn't because there's this great big cage all around it. So my fear was completely irrational, but you tell my knees that. They were really knocking. And my hands were shaking. I remember trying to take this picture of the Chrysler Building. And this was back in the day when it wasn't digital. This was, the, remember, the old film type. Well, when I, got, when I got that film processed, what was remarkable was that you couldn't see the Chrysler building because what my little instant camera had focused on were the bars stopping me falling over the building. But when I saw those bars, it spoke so power, powerfully to me about what fear does. It locks us in. It closes us down. It shackles us and it stops us from enjoying the glorious vista that God has for us. So you could see a blurry outline of the Chrysler building in the background. But in sharp focus were those bars. Now I don't know uh, what you're focusing on at the moment. I don't know what it is that's really coming close to you that might be scaring you. It come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes. My, my example of fear is quite a trivial one there. But there are other people uh, who face all kinds of situations which truly really are fearful. Uh, and last night um, I uh, clicked into a, a video on YouTube uh, of a hero of mine. Uh, somebody that um, I, I, I've uh, dipped into in terms of books and, uh, and videos for, for many years. And her name is Corrie Ten Boom. Uh, and you'll know the name. It's of this remarkable Dutch lady uh, who showed so much courage uh, in the face of horrendous persecution from the Nazis. And in this uh, video last night, she was talking about uh, arriving at Ravensbrook um, and she had a Bible uh, strapped into the back of, uh, of her dress, hiding it away. Uh, and then she realized that they were going to be searched by the guards. And she said to the Lord, she said, Lord, I need your word. Would you please make me invisible? Send your angels and make me invisible. And quite remarkably, as she was telling that story last night, she, she talked about how the guards searched the person in front and the person behind and completely ignored her. And then she had to go into another line and she could see that she was going to be searched again. And so she said, Lord, I need those angels again. Please, Lord, make me invisible. And exactly the same thing happened. In the place of incredible fear, she found faith in her God uh, that was so profound. Later, she said this, faith sees the invisible believes the unbelievable and receives the impossible. The three words, do not fear, are three words I believe the Lord wants us to hear loudly today. Let me share a poem with you uh, that I came across a number of years ago now. I I'm not sure who the author is. Um, if, if you recognise these words and you know the author, please, please let me know. Send me a message. It's entitled, When Trouble Strikes. It says, when trouble strikes and fears take root and dreams are dry and sense unsound. When hope becomes a barren waste, the doubts like mountains soar around. Our wandering minds believe the worst and ask as faith and fervour fade. Has God now turned his back on us, forsaking those he loved and made? God says, see how a woman cares. Can she forget the child she bore? Even if she did, I won't forget, though feeling lost, I love you more. My dearest daughter, fondest son, 
my weary folk in every land. Your souls are cradled in my heart. Your names are written on my mind. Then praise the Lord through faith and fear, in holy and in hopeless place. For height and depth and heaven and hell can't keep us from our God's embrace. I first heard those words at a Good Friday service um, back in our old church in Lisbane, Cardiff. And as I read out those words, um, my mind turned to uh, the people who loved Christ, who were standing just a way off. I tried to imagine what kind of emotions were coursing through their veins. I wonder what some of the words that they would have used to describe what they were going through at that time. And yet, even in that deepest anguish, we know that God was redeeming, God was restoring, God was victorious. And I want to finish today with the most powerful three words ever spoken from the cross at Calvary. And they're these words, it is finished. Which speaks of Christ's authority over whatever situation you and I are facing today. It speaks of us being able to put our trust into the hands of a God who knows when frankly we're confused or life is chaotic and we just can't understand what's going on. That's the experience of those disciples. But God knew. God cared. God understands. So, the three words. Do not fear. Why? Because Christ has the authority. It is finished. God bless you.